Hi everyone, welcome to another painting time lapse video. This painting is titled The Idealist and I'm pretty excited to share this with you guys because it's kind of one of my newer concepts. Um, I'm constantly doodling in my sketchbook and I only use probably 10% or less of the actual um, sketches and turn them into paintings because most of the concepts I just I end up being bored of or end up kind of not feeling too excited about and they never make it into a painting so for this one I was doodling and this idea just kind of appeared in my brain of painting a girl with crescent moons as her eyes so it was definitely very interesting and at times I was doubting whether or not she would look too scary because you know every other part of her looks pretty normal except for eyes and and at times she kind of looked like a villain of some superhero movie but um yeah I'm kind of I'm happy with how it turned out in the end but in the middle of the process I definitely had moments where I did not want to look directly at her <laughs> but um yeah so another reason I kind of went with the colors that I did for this piece is because I wanted the eyes to stand out so because the eyes were so dark and bl and blue I wanted to go with a slightly warmer skin tone I just thought it would be more dramatic and have a higher impact if there was a huge contrast between the eyes and the face um, in the beginning I definitely thought about using a cool skin tone and making the whole piece just kind of very eerie and dark and you know almost like illuminated by moonlight but um yeah I decided to go with a warm skin tone instead and another reason I went with the warm skin tone is because I wanted to practice this color palette my last few paintings I've become obsessed with painting cool faces and using lots of blues and pinks and grays and I didn't want to forget how to paint a warm face so yeah every now and then I like to switch it up just to make sure that my skills are still polished and um, to make sure I don't forget anything also a lot of you guys might notice that this moth that I'm painting today is not my typical bright teal luna moth that I usually paint and honestly I'm just kind of a little bit bored of that same moth. Um, I started off painting it because it was such a beautiful bright pop of color so whichever painting that the bright teal moth appears in it always becomes a focal point point. and for this moth um, I it was such a big component in the composition I didn't want the color to be so jarringly different so I went with a more neutral colored moth and focused on painting intricate patterns on its wings instead to give it a little bit of zest. Also prior to starting the painting I had already selected a frame for it so I thought um, the gold frame would complement a very yellowy gold butterfly as well. Um, yeah I think my biggest struggle with this piece was finding a color palette that was simple enough to bring out the frame and to bring out her eyes but also was interesting enough for um, so something with rather simple composition you know it's just a close-up of a face with a few little details so I really had to rely on my color choices to make everything unified and also um, interesting for the viewer so that's why you see here I'm painting over the pink hair with a little bit more of a sandy color because I realized like the hair was so jarringly pink it was taking a lot of focus away from the face and the interesting little details on the side of the face so um, I wanted I still wanted to leave the pink hair there I, I just kind of made a little ombre <laughs> um, it's interesting because this hair color is the exact hair color of one of my really good friends that I that I hung out with recently so I think subconsciously I remembered how cool her hair looked and I just wanted to put it onto my painting um, but yeah I actually didn't use any reference for the hair um, no photo reference so it was really challenging to try to guess how everything should look like where all the highlights should go how the strands should fall but I think 
every now and then I like to practice not using reference for at least certain parts of my paintings just to see, kind of almost test myself to see if I remember how to do them. Um, I think being able to paint without reference is really freeing and it allows you to try different poses and different compositions. So here she is in her beautiful gold frame. I really love how the frame brings out the warm tones in this piece. And if you want to see a real-time unedited version of this video, um, it's over two hours long, feel free to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash happydartist. I pump out at least one real-time painting video there a month so you can get a closer look at all of my techniques and examine each brush stroke. And um, as always, I'd like to dedicate this video and give a heartfelt thank you to everyone who's supported me on Patreon. Um, I can't wait to make more videos for you guys and share them, so I will catch you next time. Bye!